Hello, welcome to News Now on TV360. I am Fidelia Agoncha. We'll begin with the latest on Nigeria's counterinsurgency operation in the Northeast. The Nigerian Air Force says it has killed scores of Boko Haram insurgents in air raids on terrorist hideouts in Koleram, Borneo State. The strikes were carried out in conjunction with ground troops of the Nigerian Army. Now, a statement signed by Air Force spokesperson, Air Vice Marshal Olatu Kumbo, at Desoya said the strikes were carried out following calls from a Nigerian army commander that troops conducting clearance operations at Koleram had come in contact with the terrorists. Now news of the airstrike follows announcement by the army that its troops have rescued 1,000 Boko Haram captives during various clearance operations in Bernou State. The army in a statement said the captives were rescued during operations at Malamkari, Amchaka, Walasa and Gora, Gora villages of Bama local government area of Borneo State. The statement noted that most of the rescued are women and children, but did not give a specific ratio. The rescued persons are being attended to in a military medical facility in the state. Still on security matters now, the Nigerian Senate has again summoned the Inspector General of Police, Ibrahim Idris, to appear before it. This time, the third time, this is the third time in less than two weeks. The lawmakers will be summoning the police chief. This time, the Senate wants the IGP to explain what is being done to address the increase in the number of arms in the country. The lawmakers during debate on the matter on Tuesday had expressed worry over the increase of arms in the country, especially ahead of the 2019 elections. Also summoned are the Director General of the Department of State Service, Lawa Odwara, the Comptroller General of the Nigerian Customs, Hamed Ali, and the Chief of Army Staff. Lieutenant General Tuka Baratai. Meanwhile, as part of efforts to address the security challenges, President Muhammadu Buhari has approved the establishment of a new battalion of the Nigerian Army, as well as a new police area command in Beninguari local government area of Kaduna State. The new Army Battalion and Police Area Command are the latest in a series of law enforcement measures to ensure more effective protection of lives and property in and around Benue. Kaduna, Taraba, Zamfara, and Nasarawa State. Just last week, the Nigerian Air Force took delivery of two helicopter gunships for deployments to parts of the country affected by banditry. A quick response wing has also been established by the Nigerian Air Force in Taraba State, while a joint military intervention force is fully on ground in Benue State. Another batch of 218 Nigerians have returned from Libya. The returnees arrived on Tuesday via the Mortala Mohammed International Airport in Lagos. Their return was facilitated by the International Organization for Migration, IOM. The returnees were made up of 46 female adults, including seven pregnant women and five female infants, with 161 male adults, including a stable medical case, two male children, and nine male infants. They were received by the Southwest Zonal Coordinator of the agency. The new batch of returnees bring the total number of Nigerian migrants repatriated from Libya by the IOM and European Union to 8,129 people. The zonal coordinator who received the new batch assured them of government's continued support in their reintegration process. The United Kingdom says Nigeria's policies towards eradicating corruption is on track. Paul Arkwright, UK ambassador to Nigeria, said this at the 2018 Open Government Partnership, OGP. Nigeria's Vice President Yemi Oshibajo at the event also explained strategy implementations by government to ensure that recovered loot are put in a transparent use for the people. Nigeria has been faced with the challenge of effectively utilizing its resources to support equitable economic growth, effective service delivery, and social cohesion. One of the major reasons for this is lack of openness, transparency and accountability in governance. This is why President Muhammad Buhari joined the Open Government Partnership in 2016 to provide an international platform for domestic reformers to make their governments more open, accountable and responsive to citizens. At the 2018 OGP Week, corruption, transparency in government, Partnership between government and civil society groups are the focus of discussion. Nigeria joining the OGP sends a strong signal 
that it sees an inherent value in openness and in civil society and government working together. This is also a strong national and global message on your commitment to tackling corruption. The diplomat said the Nigerian government has shown commitment to openness and governance, strengthening institutions and public participation in democratic governance. Nigeria's progress has been very commendable. The first OGP self-assessment report indicates that reforms in Nigeria's first national action plan are on track. Citizens' engagement in the federal budget process has been strengthened by timely release of budget information and the various consultations with the civil society organizations that were held. Nigeria's Vice President, Yemi Shimbajo, believes efforts by the present government is yielding positive fruits in every sector of the economy and in civil service. This position was also re-echoed by the Secretary to Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, who said most of the figures released by international agencies rating corruption in Nigeria is not the true picture of the situation. Boss has set up a presidential committee on asset recovery and develop procedures and guidance to ensure that all recovered funds are paid into the single central bank asset recovery account for improved transparency and ease of management. The federal government's agreement with the Swiss government on the return of looted funds traced to the former head of state, Sonia Baja, led to the remittance of 322 million US dollars in December 2017. This historic agreement also includes CSO monitoring of the utilization of the returned asset. I must acknowledge the role played by the African Network for Environment and Economic Justice in the negotiation of this agreement and leading of other CSOs in monitoring the utilization of the fund. Since 2017, our annual national budgets have included a line item on revenue generated from asset recoveries. All funds forfeited to the federal government are being included in our yearly budget proposals for appropriation by the National Assembly. The government is waging an unprecedented fight against corruption through asset recovery, prosecution of acts of corruption, instituting new social economic system and culture, as well as rebuilding anti-corruption institutions to prevent future recurrence. This administration has introduced policies and legislation that will help achieve goals set out in our OGP commitments. The Attorney General of the country, Abu Bakr Malami, praised the media and civil society groups for keeping government on its toes always and solicited for more partnership in the future. You have constructively provided government with lens and feedback mechanisms that have enabled us to see and reflect as well as implement the priority policies of citizens in a more responsive and inclusive manner. 96 countries, including Nigeria, signed up for the implementation of the Open Government Partnership. TV360, Lagos. President Mohamed Buhari is expected to embark on a four-day trip to the United Kingdom to visit his doctors. A statement from the president's office said the trip is on the request of the doctors. He is expected to return to Nigeria on May 12th. It is the second time President Buhari will be seeing his doctors in less than a week after a previous trip during a technical stopover for aircraft maintenance in London on his way back from Washington last week. The new visit casts doubts over his long-term health. The president, who has already announced he will contest in next year's election, spent more than three months in London last year. Our correspondent spoke to a cross-section of Nigerians to get their opinion of the president's latest trip. The man is tired already. He's an old man. Let him go and retire. This traveling is just like opportunity for this man. It's like he will not be able to treat himself very well. Getting to this president, he has just used our money to travel, do this for this treatment, that treatment. And only thing we gain from him is that Nigeria youth are lazy. He will be advising people to treat themselves in Nigeria. Why even our own president is going outside, flying every day by day to go and treat himself outside the country. Bari has not made any mistake on that. 
is doing the right thing he met on ground. But in the nutshell, you can compare it to, to money or governance. Earth is wealth. And I say, wherever you can go to get your earth balance, you need to move. They are just wasting Nigeria money because going there, I don't know what is going there for. Because he will go and come back and hear the sickness is still in his body. So I, I want them not to be wasting Nigeria money. People are there suffering, seeking for jobs, seeking for employment. There's no food for people to eat. Why are they not? They cannot be able to invest that money for them to be able to do something else and to wasting the money to give him Buhari for medical treatment. I cannot run it because of that reason. For 2019, I don't share that opinion. As a Nigerian, he has the constitutional right to contest, like every other human being. And for now, there is no credible alternative to Buhari. All the politicians that are coming out, no credible alternative to Buhari. If our health sector is okay and uh, everything is working fine, there is no need for him to travel. That shows that he has a lot to do in our health sector. Ali Shoyode, an industrialist and founder of Europe's first ethnic media and satellite television, Ben TV, has declared intention to run in the 2019 presidential election. Shoyode, who made the declaration on Monday in Abuja, said he took the decision after consultations with youth, leaders, elders, trade unions, non-governmental organizations, among others. He has yet to announce the platform under which he would run. When you're talking about poverty, we need to create jobs. And not just talking about creating jobs, you need to create the resources that allow you to create jobs. So for Nigeria, for example, when we talk about agriculture, we, yes, we have the resources to be one of the top African countries producing good agricultural products. But when we're yes to exploit, we cannot really gain out of it. So when we talk about poverty, uh, even when you want to relate well, you have to relate it to the health of the nation. How we fear him? We fear him very badly. And then, as you rightly mentioned, the crisis in Nigeria definitely is not allowing things to improve. Even within Nigeria, for people to actually trade, it's very, very hard. So what we know is anybody that knows of me knows that I'm tenacious, I'm focused, I know what I want, and I know where to find the best brain in Nigeria that can allow us to use the best opportunity and begin to change the Nigerian story from where we are to much more better and a greater place. Right now, sir, I'm presently speaking to as many parties that are looking for a candidate. Many of them were wondering if I'm really going to stand for election. So now that, that, is, that has been that is no more an issue now because at least now they know I've made it a public declaration that I want to serve my country. And the truth of the matter as well, oh, sorry. And the truth of the matter as well is I have been serving Nigeria for the last 20 years and I challenge anybody who feel that they have, they have done for Nigeria what we have been doing for Nigeria without taking from the Nigerian pot, without taking from the Nigerian cake, please let that person come forward and tell the youth and tell the more than 70 million Nigerians electorate that this is what they have been doing for Nigeria, not because they gain them from Nigeria, but because they believe in Nigeria and they give them back to Nigeria. Let that person please come forward. You're tuned in to news now on TV 360. Up next is business news. Now yeah, eh? Yes, Oga. Okay. Why go come find 300 naira change? I better try to look for change now. Ah, what do you do business? Hey, Timmy. Are they bro? I be. Mm -hmm. hey, I, I beg, uh, give me 200 naira. Make I take sort out this guy. If that's him, no get change. Shh. Okay, give us. I said 200. Give us 100 naira. Yeah. Oga, I agree to pay 200. How much you think they carry people from that place where you carry the chair? Oga. Why they touch me? Now 100 naira. Uh -huh. He agreed to pay. Hey, because that was what you said was the fair. Why, oh, yeah. why you not going to pay you? Why you they extort your customer? You see this corruption, corruption, what would they hear for news? They see for people everywhere. Now you do this. This is corruption. Not in our country. Ah. Corruption not in my country. Stop corruption now.
Welcome to Business News. I am Esther Vasing. President Mohamed Buhari has written to the Nigerian Senate seeking confirmation of seven persons, including senior lawyer Festus Kiyamo, as board members of the Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation. The president's request was contained in a letter read on the floor of the Senate during plenary on Tuesday by its president, Bukola Saraki. Others on the list are Ola Bade Akin Mustafa, representing Ogun State, Garba Buba, representing Bauchi State, Belo Garba, Sokoto State, Joseph Oje Okalugu, Enugu State, Mustafa Adewale Madashiru, from Kwara State, and Adewale Adelike, representing Undo State. In other news, sub-Saharan African nations are at growing risk of debt distress because of heavy borrowing and gaping deficit, and that's despite the overall uptick in despite overall optic in economic growth. This is according to a new report which was released by the International Monetary Fund on Tuesday. In its economic outlook for the region released in Accra, Ghana, the fund projected the rate of economic expansion will rise from the 2.8% achieved in 2017 to 3.4% this year, and that's boosted by global growth and higher commodity prices. Slower growth in South Africa and Nigeria, the continent's two largest economies, weighed on the region-wide average. But the IMF expects growth to pick up in around two-thirds of African nations. However, under current policies, the rate is expected to plateau below 4% over the medium term. All is on Tuesday ahead of an announcement by US President Donald Trump on whether the United States will reimpose sanctions on Iran. Now, should President Trump pull the United States out of a multi-nation agreement on Tehran's nuclear program, the Iranian crude exports might be affected, but analysts say it would also fan the flames of geopolitical tensions in the Middle East, which is the home to a third of the nation's daily oil supply. Now, Brent crude features were down 51 cents at $75.62 a barrel, while U.S. crude features fell 81 cents to $69.92 a barrel. The Nigerian Stock Exchange closed another trading day in the reds as the bears maintained their grip on the markets, recording a total of 563.691 million shares valued at 5.768 billion naira, being transacted in 4,217 deals. Now, despite gains from First City Monument Bank, Guarantee Trust Bank, Zenit Bank, and Sovereign Insurance being top traders, the market still witnessed a 0.04% decline in the all share index with market capitalization closing at 14.907 trillion naira. The losers' table was dominated by Forte Oil, Nigerian Bureaus, Dangote Cement, Nascan Allied Industries. But not to worry, it's all sad news, not all sad news rather, but Mobile, Presco, Cement Company of Northern Nigeria, and Julius Beja led the gainers' table ahead of 29 others. And it's a wrap on business news. We will be back after the break. Please stay tuned. So at least start with your voter's card and begin to use that to bargain about the type of person you want to see on February 16, 2019 and March 2nd on the ballot paper. Okay, so we want to focus on people who haven't voted before. It's 100,000 people who are looking to pleasure because that gives us a minimum of 1 million new voters. Instead of to say, oh, uh, my vote will count now. Try vote first, then you see what I will count, you know. Welcome back. Authorities in Kenya say nine soldiers have been killed by Islamist militants al-Shabaab, and this was contained in a statement released by the office of the president, Uhuru Kenyatta. The statement, however, offered no other details on the incident that led to the soldiers' death. 
Al-Shabaab is fighting to topple Somalia's central government and establish its own rule based on a strict interpretation of Islamic law. The group also conducts frequent assaults in Kenya, mostly in the region bordering Somalia, to put pressure on the Kenyan government to withdraw its peacekeeping troops from Somalia. The Democratic Republic of Congo has confirmed two cases of Ebola in the northwestern town of Bikoro and at least 10 more suspected cases. This was contained, this was announced by the head of the National Institute for Biological Research, Jin Muyembe, on Tuesday. The government is, however, yet to confirm this report. Now, it is the ninth time Ebola has been recorded in Congo, whose eastern Ebola River gave the deadly virus its name when it was discovered there in the 1970s. The latest incidence of the disease comes less than a year after the Central African country last outbreak in which eight people were infected, of whom four died. Moving on to sports now, President of the Handball Federation of Nigeria has disbanded the senior national men's team following their recent performances in continental competitions. A statement from the Federation's President Samuel Ocheho announced the team's disbandment at the end of the first phase of the Prudent Energy Handball League at the National Stadium in Abuja. Nigeria exited the 2018 African Handball Championship in Gabon in the group stage after losing all their four matches to Egypt, Angola, Morocco and Congo. Arsene Wenger says he is surprised at the number of job offers he has received since his departure from Arsenal was announced, urging the club to appoint his successor as soon as possible. The French man will step down as Ghana's boss after Sunday's Premier League trip to Huddersfield with Juventus coach Emiliano Allegri reportedly the first choice of the Arsenal board as his replacement. Wenger will leave after almost 22 years at the helm. He was handed an emotional tribute from the club following Sunday's 5-0 defeat of Burnley, his final game in charge of the Emirates at the Emirates Stadium. The 68-year-old has said he will take a break from football before deciding on his next move, but reviewed on Tuesday, he has not been short of shooters since last month's surprise announcement. Legendary Manchester United manager Sir Alex Ferguson is reportedly out of coma. The Daily Mail report Ferguson has reportedly been sitting up and talking to family and friends after undergoing emergency surgery. It's it is claimed that the 76-year-old's response to treatment has pleased doctors at the Southport Royal Hospital, although they still claim that the Scot will face a long road to recovery. Ferguson's family and Manchester United are yet to release official information on his health. Well, that's all on news now, but do log on to our website at tv360nigeria.com to get more on news updates and other programs. Also follow us on all social media platforms at TV360 Nigeria. Thanks for watching. I am Fidelia Agoncha.